Or I think it confirmed that he's pretty stupid um, and quite arrogant and a, a great believer in himself. Um, but we did learn, I suppose, that he had no regrets about his friendship, his very ill-judged friendship with Jeffrey Epstein, um, and that he proclaimed his absolute innocence of anything. I mean, basically, we knew most of it, but to hear any of that come from uh, his, his own mouth was was jaw-dropping. Jenny Bond, the former BBC Royal Correspondent, joins us now. Jenny, good evening. Good evening. Just remind us, that, that interview, that extremely awkward interview, what did we actually ultimately learn that was new about Prince Andrew? That was new? I'm not sure. I think it confirmed that he's pretty stupid um, and quite arrogant and a, a great believer in himself. Um, but we did learn, I suppose, that he had no regrets about his friendship, his very ill-judged friendship with Jeffrey Epstein, um, and that he proclaimed his absolute innocence of anything. I mean, basically, we knew most of it, but to hear any of that come from uh, his, his own mouth was was jaw dropping. Is, is that what was so extraordinary? Because it was it was more the sort of fact that the interview had taken place rather than, as we've just sort of said, rather than what he said. Uh, yeah, I mean, there have been rumours floating around for years, for, for a decade, really, um, about his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. Um, and some of it seemed to be quite far-fetched. I didn't know what was true as the royal correspondent. I mean, some of it seemed quite ridiculous and unbelievable. Uh, but to hear him confirm um, his friendship with him was astounding. But it was the fact that it was him saying it, that a member of the royal family had decided to... Um, be confronted with all these allegations on television, on national television, for a full hour to be subjected to an interrogation, a cross-examination by, you know, one of the most formidable interviewers um, in broadcasting, Emily Maitlis. I mean, that's what was astounding. Mm. It was clearly very damaging at the time. This story is all going to get retold, resurfaced. You know, there's already news articles looking through exactly uh, the details of this documentary. H how awkward is this again for the royal family? Well, I, of course, it's very embarrassing to have us all talking about it again when, um, you know, it has sort of quietened down. Uh, I mean, Andrew has, as you know, been been sacked by his own mother. He's taken a, a, a back place now in the royal family. He appears at private engagements, but nothing public. That's not going to change. Um, but sort of the whole Epstein thing, were, you know, we weren't all going on about it in the media much anymore, were we? But now we are. And of course, that is by by definition embarrassing for him um, and, and tarnishing, really, for the whole royal family who are going through a very difficult time, as you all know, for all sorts of reasons that you know about. And so to have this over the headlines again, of course, it's bad news. Do you think that interview changed any way in which the palace engaged with the public or at the very least the media? Um, well, I should think they'd be rather shy of doing one-to-one -one interviews. And, well, they always have been, actually. It's very unusual for a member of the royal family to do it. Um, I'm not quite sure... I think they would take the view of why on earth this, this has been made, which is actually the view I took when I heard that this was coming out. And indeed, there's another one on Amazon coming out. This is a Netflix um, one. Um, why do we need to, to dramatise what is readily available and could not have been more dramatic in itself? Mm. You know, if you want to know <laughs> all the, the, the shock value of it, just go, go and watch the real thing. Um, and as far as I can see, Scoop thus far from the previews has not had the best reviews. Um, you know, I've seen it's full of self-importance, it's very self-admiring. Um, and it's more the backstory, I suppose. It's how they how... secured the interview, isn't it, rather than the interview in itself. Yeah, but is that a bit navel-gazing? You know, is that really about... Is the me We know the media are interested in it. Is the general public really interested in the minutiae of how you get an interview? Not sure. Jenny, thank you so much. Jenny Bond, former BBC Royal Correspondent. Rosamond Irwin, who has been having a look at this, comparing it with the uh, real life. Good morning, Rosamond. Good morning. Now, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, such are the demands of this particular job <laughs> and the, the hours involved. But I understand that there is a kind of disclaimer on it saying some of it has been fictionalised. Is, is that right? 
Yes, right at the start, there's uh, a line that goes across saying this is a dramatization, essentially, which is to be expected. Mm. Of course, it is a. Dr they've turned it into a drama. They're not claiming it is 100 percent exactly uh, what happened, because if you think about it, this is about chasing an interview. And lots of journalists would say to that, well, we chase interviews every day <laughs> and there's lots of sending emails and maybe some phone calls. And that doesn't necessarily make um, compelling drama. So there's a lot of things that obviously happened over the phone or over email that are happening in person here. Yeah, that was my concern, that often newsrooms are not quite <laughs> quite as glamorous as we'd all like to think, that it is a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, and maybe an occasional coffee or two. So, and what... people ignoring you. And people, yeah, people <laughs> a lot of people ignoring you. Yeah, I mean, that's the rule of journalism, isn't it? You send 10 emails and you get one reply. Exactly. Yeah. So, so how have they dramatised it? And, and does the kind of dramatisation of it take away from the story itself, I suppose? Well, um, I just read Hugo Rifkin's I think, mm. brilliant review um, this morning, and I, I think he's got a very valid point that we never actually got to the bottom of, of Prince Andrew's involvement with Epstein. Now, there's a line in the drama that says, you know, what if he's good? So Emily Maitlis, but when she's prepping for the interview, obviously this is this is fictionalised. I don't mean literally Emily Maitlis. I mean Gillian Anderson playing Emily Maitlis. Um, she asks, what if he's good? And, and her... Then, um, then the deputy editor of Newsnight says to her, basically, you're not going to allow him to be good. But of course, we didn't actually get an answer really on on a fundamental question, and and that's Hugo's Hugo's point. And um, there's a broader thing here that that I felt for me was troubling, which is that we don't hear it from the victims, and I can understand that the victims of Epstein. I mean, I can understand that because it's hard to know how to make what is in other places a light and um, a light drama. You know, there's jokes, there's funny bits. Mm. Uh, Andrew obviously is played as a buffoon. And, and it's hard to get from that side to the fact that there are victims of horrific crimes here, of Epstein's horrific crimes here. And they're not, they're not focused on, you don't actually hear from them. You do see them a tiny bit on screen, um, but you know, they're sort of in photos or there's a tiny bit of footage. You don't hear from them at all. And I, I found that a bit troubling. Mm. Um, I think Netflix has sort of gone for a, a bit of a balancing act here. In their portrayal of, of Andrew, they show him essentially as a buffoon. And I think Netflix didn't want to row with the palace. And that, that's the argument my piece, really, that the royal side of it, which obviously is not the side of it they had access to. This is based on a book written by the booker at, at Newsnight, Sam McAllister. So they don't really know exactly what went on on the other side, although they will have consulted with people, of course. But the portrayal of Andrew is, I think, designed to let the palace off so that Netflix doesn't have some big row with mm. with with the palace which it won't want. Yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, and and in addition to that then, I suppose my question with all of these things is does a, a drama such as this who does it portray overly kindly and who is it overly cruel to? Well, it's based on Sam McCallis's book, so she's the hero of this piece. And there's a lot of unsung staff at the BBC, um people who we don't hear from, and there's a perception that Quite often, uh, you know, it's it's the presenters who who claim the glory for stories when other people ha have done the work. I don't think that's fair in this case, incidentally. I mean, an interview, how good an interview is hinges on the questions and the delivery, and that was down to Emily Maitlis.